Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to implement custom behaviors inside mobile traffic system. To illustrate this, I will create a simple example where a traffic vehicle hits spikes on the road. I am starting with a scene that already has the traffic system fully set up. Here, you can see the spikes positioned on the road. The prefab consists of a rigid body, which is required for trigger events, and a collider marked as a trigger. Now I will create a script that triggers a new behavior whenever a vehicle collides with the spike trigger. Assign the script to the game object and open it. I'll start by creating the onTriggerEnter method. The first thing to check is whether the other object is also a trigger. If it is, we ignore it since it's likely the front trigger, not the actual car collider. Next, I'll get the attached rigid body. If it's null, that means the collision wasn't with a vehicle. Finally, I'll check for the vehicle component. If that's also null, then the object isn't a traffic vehicle. At this point, we can trigger the spikes on ground behavior. Create a new script and name it spikes on ground, then open the script. All behavior scripts must extend the vehicle behavior abstract class. Automatically implement the required abstract methods. For now, I'll return the default values and implement the actual logic later. Once we've created the behavior script, we can trigger it from the spike script. Call the start vehicle behavior method from the API. Set the vehicle index on which to start this behavior. In this case, the list index property of the vehicle component. For demonstration purposes, I'll also pass the vehicle's rigid body as a parameter. This ensures that every time a vehicle hits the spike's trigger, the behavior is activated. Now it's time to initialize the traffic system so we can see our vehicle in action. To do this, I'll create a new script called tutorial script. Attach the script to the script's holder game object. Inside the script, I'll create a public property to assign the player transform and another one to assign the vehicle pool. In the start method, I'll call the initialize method. The first parameter is the player, the second is the number of vehicles. I'll use just one for easier debugging, and the last one is the vehicle pool. Next, I'll assign the public fields. I've already created a vehicle pool with a single vehicle in it. I'll mark this vehicle as ignore, which means the system won't initialize it until it's explicitly specified by the user. Finally, I'll assign the vehicle pool as well. I will create a special method to instantiate the ignored vehicle. First, I'll add a transform field to represent the spawn position and a camera follow field to reference the camera script currently following the player. I want to change the camera's target from the player to the newly instantiated vehicle for a better view of the custom behavior. Next, I'll move the spawn position closer to the spikes game object and assign it to the corresponding field. I'll also assign the camera component to ensure it follows the new vehicle instead of the player. The vehicle will be instantiated when I press the one key on the keyboard, so I need to check for the alpha one key press. I'll use the instantiate ignored vehicle method from the API. The first parameter is the vehicle index, which in this case is zero. The second parameter is the spawn position, which I'll set to the previously created transform field. The third parameter is a callback method that will be executed after the vehicle is initialized. I'll generate this method by right-clicking and selecting Generate Method inside the generated method. The first parameter is the vehicle component of the newly instantiated vehicle, and the second one is the waypoint where it was spawned. I'll log both to the console for reference. Next, I'll update the camera's target by setting its target property to the transform of the new vehicle component. Finally, I'll inform the traffic system that the player has changed, so it now tracks this newly instantiated vehicle instead of the previous one. 
I will enable debug actions so we can verify whether the behavior we just created activates when the vehicle crosses over the spikes. Now I am pressing 1 to instantiate the vehicle, and the camera follows it as expected. However, it seems that the new behavior is not activating. This indicates that there might be an issue in our spike script, so let's check for errors. It looks like it is caused by an autocomplete mistake. Instead of attach rigid body, I accidentally used attached articulated body. I will correct this now and test again. Now the code executes correctly, but an error is showing in the console stating that the spikes on ground behavior is not found. This is because it hasn't been added to the supported behavior list yet. All default behaviors included in the package are listed inside the default vehicle behavior script. One option to make our new behavior work is to add it to the end of this list. However, the downside is that if you modify the package, this script will be overridden since it's a package script. Modifying package scripts is not recommended. A better solution is to create a new script and define all the behaviors you want to use inside it. I will duplicate the existing script, move it outside the package folders, and rename it to My Vehicle Behaviors. In this new file, I will add the newly created behavior using the new keyword. Now we need to inform the mobile traffic system to use our custom behavior list instead of the default one. To do this, we must create a traffic options object before initializing the traffic system. Then, we set its vehicle behaviors property to a new instance of my vehicle behaviors. Finally, we pass the traffic options object as the fourth parameter in the initialize method. This ensures that the system will now use our custom behavior list. I will test it again, and this time it should work without any errors. And indeed, it does. As you can see, the newly created behavior is now assigned to the vehicle. For now, it doesn't perform any actions. But in the next section, I will implement its functionality. The first thing I want to do is retrieve the rigid body that was passed as a parameter. To do this, I will override the setPerms method. Since we passed only a single parameter, the rigid body will be at index 0 in the parameter list, so we need to cast it to the correct type before using it. If you need multiple parameters, you can access them using indices 1, 2, and so on. To create a more dramatic effect, I will apply an explosion force at the front of the vehicle when it hits the spikes. This will simulate the tires exploding. The first parameter of add explosion force is the force value, while the second one is the position of the explosion. Since our script extends the vehicle behavior abstract class, it has access to various vehicle properties like vehicle component, traffic waypoints data, all vehicles data, and more. Additionally, there are multiple methods you can override for advanced functionality. Check the documentation for more details. Now, let's finalize our explosion force setup. I will apply the force at the front axle with a slide offset for a more realistic bounce effect. Let's see it in action. That looks like a good enough bounce in my opinion. Now I will make the back of the vehicle bounce as well. Since this is not a mono behavior, I cannot use a coroutine, so I will use a task instead. First, I will create an async method and add a task delay of 0.2 seconds to introduce a short wait before applying the second force. Then, I will add the same explosion force but apply it to the back of the car. Set the offset on the other side. Next, I will call this method to trigger the rear bounce. Let's press play and see the result. In my opinion, this effect looks decent, but you can tweak the force values and positions to achieve a more realistic bounce based on your needs. Now I will define the vehicle's driving behavior after it hits the spikes. I wanted to turn fully to the left and perform a hard break. This will all be handled inside the execute method which must return a behavior result containing all the driving parameters. First, I will create the return object, which I will call result. Then, 
I will use the built-in steer method. Passing result as the first parameter and minus one as the second parameter to indicate maximum left steering. The steer value ranges from minus one, full left, to one, full right. If we navigate to the steer method, you will see that all it does is set the steer percent property. Finally, I will return the result object. Let's test it. As you can see, after hitting the spikes, the vehicle continues turning left as expected. Next, I will make the vehicle brake. The perform forward movement method controls the vehicle's speed and braking parameters. First, I will pass a reference to the result object as the first parameter. The second parameter represents the allowed speed, which is automatically calculated based on the vehicle's maximum speed or the speed limit of the road. This value can be accessed using get first waypoint speed. The future allowed speed parameter is the target speed the vehicle needs to reach. In this case, it is zero because the vehicle must come to a full stop. The position to reach target speed defines where the vehicle should reach the target speed. For example, when stopping at a red light, the vehicle should only stop at the waypoint, not immediately. However, in our case, the vehicle must stop instantly, so I will use the default position from traffic system constants. Next is brake percent, which controls braking intensity. By default, it is set to 1, meaning the vehicle will use natural braking. If set higher, the vehicle will brake more aggressively. Since I want an immediate stop, I will set this to 5. The min brake percent is the minimum brake threshold for the brake to activate. For example, there is a red light at 100 meters in front of the vehicle. The system will calculate what brake power is needed to stop in that distance. That value is passed using required brake power parameter. If the distance is long, it might require to brake with 0.1 power for the entire 100 meters. In reality, it does not happen like that, and the car starts to brake only when it is closer. So you can set it to brake only when the minimum brake percent is around 0.8, and that will make it brake only in the last 20 meters. In our case, braking must be instant, so I will set this to zero. By default, vehicles stop with their front wheels aligned with the stop position. If you want the vehicle to stop earlier, you can specify a distance to stop value, which represents how far before the stop position the vehicle should stop. This is useful when stopping before an obstacle, usually three to four meters away, ensuring a safe distance. Since this is not needed in our case, I will set it to zero. With this setup, the vehicle will come to a complete stop immediately after hitting the spikes. Let's check the final result. As you can see, the vehicle hits the spikes, bounces, then performs a hard brake and comes to a stop. This is exactly the intended behavior demonstrating how custom vehicle interactions can be implemented using the mobile traffic system. And that's it. You now know how to create custom vehicle behaviors inside the mobile traffic system. Experiment with different parameters to fine tune the results and bring even more realism to your traffic simulations. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more tutorials.